Hello everybody, Calamity here, or at least that's what I'm known as on Spooktube. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite nun idol, Barbara, who's currently on the banner alongside Anubala and Kazaha. However, she did not get a character trial, and I'm guessing it's because she's just so old that Oyoverse just assumes y'all know all about this character and how to use her, but there might be some new players that are just starting their adventures in Teva and are wondering how the heck do I build this character? How does she work? Are there some interesting ways to build her? And yeah, there are. And we're going to go over them, including her talents, weapons, artifacts, the teams you should use her in, uh, her constellations, and so that's still a lot to do. But let's go ahead and get started. Barbara is a hydro healer, and she can be both an active healer as well as an off-field healer with her elemental skill. There are plenty of ways to build her when it comes to her artifacts and her weapons, which we'll talk more about later. But for now, let's just dive right into her talents and explain what they do. Starting with the normal attack talent, Whisper of Water. As the name suggests, it is a normal attack talent with no special gimmicks to it. Her normal attack does four water splash attacks that deal hydro damage. Now remember that she is a catalyst user, so she will only ever be doing hydro damage, you cannot convert hydro, or, uh, catalyst users to a different element. Her charge attack is also very basic, it does a small-ish AoE hydro damage after she casts a short time. It also does eat up a bunch of your stamina, so be careful when spamming it. Her plunging attack is the same as all the other catalyst users, she'll turn into like a ball, you know, when you plunge and then when she hits the ground she'll do AoE Hydro damage once again. So let's move on to the skill, which is called Let the Show Begin. And when you activate the skill you're going to have like a loop of musical notes surround your character. This does apply the wet status as it implies or as it states here. While the loop is around your character, if Barbara is the active character, her normal attacks will heal all of your party members as well as anyone nearby if you're playing in co-op and this scales off her max HP. If you do her charge attack, it generates four times the amount of healing, as well as just periodically regenerating HP every few seconds. Now, the thing you need to know about the wet status is the most annoying thing that can happen to you is that if you come into contact with any sort of cryo, whether it be part of the environment or an enemy's attack, you will freeze and that is super annoying to get constantly frozen and having to spam a button to unfreeze yourself so do you keep in mind one of barbara's biggest weaknesses is cryo when you use her skill simply because it'll freeze you we can take a quick look at the skill attributes we can see the two different uh scalings of healing are much different so you have the hp regeneration per hit remember that's quadrupled when you do a charge and then you have the continuous regeneration that happens passively uh, and this does not require Barbara to be on the field. Now there is a little bit of droplet damage as you can see but the multiplier is so low that you even at level 11 it's very it's not noticeable really. And then duration is 15 seconds it does have a cooldown of 32 seconds this is really really long. Uh, I have no idea why. I guess they don't want you to infinite heal. Barbara was with the release of Genshin, so we do see a lot of the old designs and like a lot of flaws with her kit compared to like the newer healers that we have today. But you know, it is what it is, so to speak. And last but not least is Shining Miracle. This is her elemental burst, and I believe she is the only four star character that has a special animation uh, when you use their burst like a special little cinematic and I think you know something something Barbara used to be a five star was designed to be a five star character before they decided to just downgrade her to four star I guess but either way she has her own special animation when she does her burst and it just straight up heals your entire team based again off her max HP and it does have an, an energy cost of 80 which does sound pretty bad at first but she does have ways to get extra energy particles so you don't have to really go too hard on energy recharge, although it's, you know, it's nice to have a little bit just to uh, have the burst up consistently if you need the healing all the time. But really her skill should help you uh, just stay alive for the most part, at least when you're just exploring. Um, and even for boss fights, I feel like her sustain is really good with just the elemental skill. But moving on to her passive talents, we have Glorious Season. This is going to reduce your stamina consumption of all characters including Barbara herself by 12% so charge attacks become a, a lot easier to spam but 
you know, still be mindful when you're actually using them. Next up is Encore, which allows you to extend the duration of Let the Show Begin. This makes the cooldown a little, you know, not as bad. As long as you're gathering el elemental orbs or particles, you can extend it up to 5 seconds. And then we have, last but not least, her cooking talent with My Whole Heart. I do think this is a bit overkill, but if you decide to cook food that restores HP, Barbara has a 12% chance to double it, so you can get even more food, but... The whole point of Barbara healing so well is that you never need to actually cook food once she's properly built. So if you look at the talent priority guides, it is pretty much self-explanatory. You don't need to level up her normal attack since we don't need the damage. Um, I just did it because why not back in the day. And then we want to level up her skill first and foremost since that's more active than her burst. Moving on to weapons, we have... we. Do not actually need to get to like a weapon that has like energy recharge, like for example, a Pavonius Codex. You don't really need to do that. I mean, you can give it to her if you want. Just keep in mind if you do end up giving her this, to proc this weapon's effect, you are going to need to give her some crit rate. You know, that might be... It's not the hardest thing to get because, you know, Barbara has so much freedom with substats, but it also can be just a straight up pain sometimes. Another good weapon... Honestly, one of her best ones is going to be the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. This is a 3-star weapon, so very easy to, to get to Refinement 5. And it has HP percentage as a substat, so more healing for us. And if you read the weapon's effect, the next character you swap to is going to have a 48% attack boost for 10 seconds. And this effect can only occur every 20 seconds. Uh, this is very easy to get to Refinement 5. Again, 3-star weapon, so... Not impossible there, so if you want to give her more support buffs, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is one of the best ways to do it. Prototype Amber is another weapon that I'll point out because this is something you can craft early on. It also has an HP substat. Now, <laughs> the weapon's effect is if you thought Barbara just didn't heal enough for whatever reason, this weapon will add even more healing to her kit as well as a bit of energy when she uses her burst, so... And I, I will be skipping 5-star options, because obviously there's going to be a lot of good ones if you, you know, want to invest that hard into her, like a Komi signature weapon if you have it, or uh, Baiju's uh, signature weapon as well if you want to use that too. But this is super, super overkill at this point. Next up, we have artifacts. Now, you might be looking at my set and thinking, whoa, what the heck is that? I will explain, but first let's talk about what, how you guys are building Barbara first. So if we look at the most recommended sets, we have 39% of you using the Maiden's Beloved, 30.5% of you are using the Ocean Hued Clam, and 3.8% of you are using like a two-piece hybrid of both. So let's go ahead and talk about them first. Maiden's Beloved is the most popular one because it's, you know, the earliest access compared to the Ocean Hued Clam and the other one I'm going to talk about in just a sec. All it does basically is just make you heal more. Nothing much else to say about it if you want your Barbara to heal more, this is great. However, once you get to Inazuma, you have access to the Ocean Hued Clam. Now this one has a really long four-piece effect, but I'm going to condense that down for you. Basically, it turns your excess healing into damage. So unlike the Maiden's Beloved, which is just more healing, this one turns healing into damage, so Barbara can actually contribute something, you know, other than just healing and some buffs, depending on how you built her. Um, and she can actually do a good amount of damage with this one. You can do up to, you can do quite a bit of damage with the sea dyed foam if you can reach the healing cap, which is thirty thousand HP. This is really easy to do with things like her burst, her skill, and just doing her charge attacks into enemies. Etc. Etc. Very, very easy to do. Now there is one more set that I will mention, but it's not on here. And no, it's not the one I have equipped. It's actually this set right here. This is a new set in Fontaine called Song of Days Past. It also gives you a two-piece healing bonus effect, just like Main's Beloved or the Ocean Hued Clam. So if you want to min max or uh, excuse me, mix and match. Uh, this set, maybe you're farming the uh, the other set in this domain for Navia or Ningguang, and you want to give Barbara, you know, more options, there you go. Now this one also has a really long uh, four-piece effect, but I'm going to go ahead and condense that down for you. 
But basically, as long as you keep healing your team, and more than one healer can contribute to this, but Barbara can do this on her own with just like her burst, because uh, it does include overheal. As you're healing your team with this artifact set equipped, you're going to get what's called the Waves of Days Past effect. What this does is going it's going to increase your normal charge, plunging, elemental skill, or elemental burst damage dealt by 8% of the total healing recorded and this again the cap is 15,000 so 8% of 15,000 is 1200 so it's a sizable damage increase keep in mind this is only going to affect five attacks from your active character so this is used for characters that deal big amounts of damage with little hits so for example we could use gaming as an example, because his biggest hit is his plunge. It does really big damage. So he'd be getting a nice significant boost to that damage with this artifact set. Now, I'm not here to tell you that this is the best one and that you should get this set at all costs. I'm, I'm just here to provide you an option. This can be another way for your Barbara to be a decent buffer for certain members of your team. Again, you're looking for characters that hit hard, um, but not frequently. You, there are your three healing slash buffing slash damaging artifact sets you can choose from. And now if you decide to build her in that way, uh, what are you looking for in terms of subsets? And it's really, really, really easy. You are looking for HP percentage, some energy recharge, and flat HP across all three of your main stat uh, pieces and your substats as well. So for the sands, HP percentage, you really don't need to go energy recharge here. For the goblet, again, we don't need hydro damage bonus, just to get HP percentage. Circlet, I would only recommend a crit one, a crit rate one if you did go Favonius Codex and you're having trouble getting that crit rate up. It's at the cost of a bit of healing. Otherwise, more HP percentage so that she can heal even more. And that's pretty much it when it comes to her healing build. Let's talk about the artifact set that I have. The other way that you could build Barbara is for Bloom. If you decide to use her in a Bloom team, then this explains why I have the Flower of Paradise Lost, which increases elemental mastery, but also just straight up increases Bloom damage by a bunch. So if you decide to go for the Bloom DPS route, then your build changes up a bit. Instead of looking for HP percentage, we're actually going to sacrifice all the excess of healing that Barbara does in exchange for Elemental Mastery. This means we want Elemental Mastery on every single artifact piece we can get our hands on, um, either as a subset or a main stat. So for the Circlet, Sands, Goblet, Elemental Mastery, and then for your, your Feather and your Flower, Elemental Mastery and just you know, pray to the RNG gods that it goes into Elemental Mastery when it upgrades. And that is pretty much how you can build her, um, either as a healer or a Bloom DPS. Barbara is one of the first characters I actually got to C6 because she was given to me early on. I don't know if she, if new players still get her. Um, so, you know, this might be easy to at least get some of her early constellations but i definitely know like it's a lot harder these days to get her to c6 because there's so many more four stars in the pool now compared to uh, previous banners let's go ahead and quickly go over what her constellations do her c1 is going to make it so that she gains one energy every 10 seconds c2 is going to make it so that when your elemental skill is active your active character gains a 15% Hydro Damage bonus, so this is really nice. Uh, nice little buff for Barbara if you're using her with... Uh, well, if you pulled for Nouvellet and you decided to use Barbara with Nouvellet, hey, there you go, a little bit of synergy there. C3 and C5 are going to increase skill and burst. Or sorry, burst and skill respectively. Just means more healing. C4 is going to increase your energy recharge when you use your charged attack. Uh, you can gain up to five energy when you hit opponents uh, with it. Not always going to happen uh, since you're not always fighting five, you know, different opponents. And if you're fighting a boss, well, you'll still get some energy for doing your charge attack, though, which is nice. C6 is one free revive. And when she does revive this fallen teammate, they will get a full HP restoration. This has a cooldown of 15 minutes and a fun little fact is that you can use this in the Spiral Abyss. So if you do have an oopsie, 
someone dies. Her C6 can activate and it will heal the character and it will not count towards you losing a star in the Spiral Abyss for having a character uh, die. So nice little consolation there if you want to cheat the rules a bit. Now let's talk about team setups for Barbara. Now obviously she's a healer so you know well that's very versatile in it of itself. Just being a healer she can be paired up with just about any main DPS you want to put her with but Here's the team that I personally use my Barbara in these days. I call it the Barbara Bloom team, although it's not really. She's the one that's contributing the least, to be fair. Um, she does act as the trigger for Bloom. So we have Neil here to amplify, you know, Bloom damage. She does have a special version of Bloom that just does way more damage than the, a normal Bloom team would. Hita here to apply her Dendro with ease and to of course boost elemental mastery. Kirara here to be a shield um, as well as to get the extra Dendro resonance buff. And then Barbara here will be our on-field trigger. She can do lots and lots of damage but the thing with Bloom teams is is that you damage yourself when the Dendro cores explode. Especially with Nilo's amplified Dendro cores it hurts a lot. So having both a shielder and a healer helps mitigate a lot of that damage and keeps you alive right so if you guys watch my new Valette guide then you know i don't have that character on my main account so this would be an example of a new Valette team that you could use so you would get plenty of elemental reactions remember that if you have two hydros in the team you get the soothing water buff which is 25 percent increased max hp so that means more healing for barbara and more damage for new Valette. So this could be an example of that, but you could also just use any, um, you know, main, this is a good setup for a lot of main DPSs uh, as well. Uh, you could even do an electro charge team if you wanted to. So we would just basically add Beto. And Yosh! now we have Spatsioka! Barbara who can work with Beto's alt fish and Fischl's alt, and then will be plenty of electro application and Barbara can just electro charge all day for you know, being like a taser sort of team and Kaza here is here to buff that damage and to help group up your enemies. Next up is a, a variation of a priest team. Now again, when I showcase these teams, there are plenty of different options you can use if you don't have the five star equivalents. I know I have a bunch of five stars here. These are just teammate suggestions, obviously some really good ones, but Barbara is here to apply her hydro. Now remember her ring doesn't have a lot of range. So you're going to have to be up close and personal uh, if you want to freeze your enemies. And again, be careful with the freeze because if you have any character that applies cryo to you, then you're also going to get frozen because of Barbara's skill, which applies hydro to you. So using her in a freeze team can be a little bit tricky depending on your teammates. So I don't really advise it, but it can still be used uh, if you want to. And that is going to be the end of this Barbara guide. Now I should have some gameplay. In the background just showcasing some exploration and some fights barbara i believe is a good character for those that are just starting out because she's an excellent healer she's going to keep you alive all the time and in fact she's one of the first characters i ever built and ever used when i first started playing genshin impact as soon as you get her going you do not ever need to cook food uh at least for healing you can you probably still will cook food for like achievements and uh, buffs and that kind of stuff, but for healing stuff, healing wise, Barbara's got you. That elemental skill, although it can be a little bit annoying to use in certain situations, really gonna carry you 90% of the time. There isn't, you know, as long as there's no cryo nearby. Really solid healing. Remember, you can use her burst to actually quote unquote dodge some really nasty attacks because while she's doing her animation and she's dancing, uh, you cannot be hit you have iframes during the animation so you know an advanced sort of way to use her is if you know you're about to get hit with a really hard hitting attack and you just cannot avoid it for whatever reason or you don't have a shielder pop that barber uh burst and you will be able to iframe through it it's really really nice and i did that a lot um in some of the more challenging fights at least early on now obviously barbara has been power crept a lot because you know the game has been growing and growing ever since its release we have a lot more healers to choose from now and a lot of them do have you know more to their kit than just oh i'm a healer like bennett as we all know 
has good healing as well, but he also buffs your attack by a large amount. So, you know, there's usually some extra that each healer can do. Like, Diona also has a lot of healing, um, but she has a safer way to apply Cryo with her elemental skill. She also has shields um, when you use her skill, so she's both a healer and a shielder. Yao Yao just spams a lot of healing and can simultaneously damage enemies with Dendro. So again, just lots and lots of improvements to healers. Uh, you know, especially the newer ones that have more modern design, so to speak. But that doesn't mean Barbara is completely useless. Again, I think she's a great beginner character. But also you can build her in other ways, like you could do what I did if you want to and build her in a Bloom team if you decide to pull for a Nilo uh, in the future and you have some other Dendro characters you want to use her with, that's perfectly viable. If you want to use her as a main DPS, maybe you've seen like the, you know, here's my Barbara doing a million damage. While that's cool and all, keep in mind that they usually do a lot of buffs via food, via characters. Uh, to really amplify her damage and get her a 5-star weapon. So you can get Barbara up to this point where she can be like a DPS, so to speak. But it, it is a lot of work. And with that being said, I believe that is going to be a wrap for this Barbara guide. If you have any other questions about the character, if you feel like I missed something, any other Barbara mains out there, if you have a build that you like to do with Barbara, feel free to share it in the comments down below. Um, and I'll also do my best to help you if you do have questions about her and how to build her and, and stuff like that. And with that being said, that is it for me. Leave a like and a subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. I'll be making more in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.